Pennsylvania's first responders, emergency medical personnel, police, and firefighters face extreme challenges in maintaining reliable communications. Between difficult terrain, drastic weather shifts, and sometimes inadequate public safety infrastructure, these professionals often find themselves cut off from the flow of vital communications when they are needed most. The most persistent difficulties encountered by these professionals in rural areas are known as radio blackouts or dead zones. Dead zones are areas that lack radio coverage, often due to distance or physical obstruction from radio repeater stations. Emergency personnel often encounter dead zones as they move further into buildings, dense foliage, over hills, or in other enclosed spaces. Such terrain impedes communication between portable radios and their repeaters. The Johnstown Fire Department approached Sermusa in 2007 for assistance in dealing with dead zones throughout the city. Within several areas of operation, including a major regional hospital, Johnstown Fire Department personnel often were unable to maintain voice communications. Some of the problems that we have with communications in the city of Johnstown include large buildings, subterranean structures, where our radio communications capabilities were impeded and we weren't able to communicate. Uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, that causes a problem because if one of our personnel gets into an emergency situation, they're not going to be able to communicate call for help, signal a mayday, or answer a PAR if needed. Sermusa IT personnel performed a market analysis to identify what, if any, commercially available systems could provide portable spot coverage. After an exhaustive search, no single product could be identified. Sermusa radio frequency specialist David Wolf came up with the concept of combining a series of commercial off-the-shelf components into a modular, easily deployable portable system. This system would be able to extend voice radio connectivity from known areas of coverage into dead zones by using a process known as radio over IP bridging or ROIP. ROIP bridging converts the transmit and receive audio from a standard voice radio into digital packet data using internet protocol also known as IP. The data is transmitted over a private non-licensed network via a series of modular repeaters. Once the data traffic reaches a repeater, it is converted back to radio voice traffic. The technology can be applied as follows. A group of firefighters is entering a building known to contain a series of radio dead zones. An ROIP bridge is placed at the entrance of the building in an area known to have adequate radio coverage by the fire company's licensed radio system. A voice radio is attached to the ROIP extension box. A second ROIP extension box and radio is carried into the building to act as a repeater inside. Using a non-licensed 900 megahertz data path, the two boxes connect. The ROIP extension box and radio inside the building act as a repeater for firefighter voice traffic. This repeater converts the voice traffic to data and transmits it to the external ROIP extension box and radio where it is relayed into the licensed RF system. The result? Firefighters within the building can talk to other firefighters over the same radio system using handsets that are already in service. Stop, drop, and talk indeed. Sermusa's RF to IP radio bridging boxes are constructed in ruggedized enclosures that include audio connections for any standard voice handset. These devices are water resistant and weigh approximately 25 pounds each. Much of the weight is due to a flexible and durable power management system which includes internal batteries, a uh, solar trickle charging panel, and an external power source. Sermusa's ROIP bridges can be configured to use 802.11 or 900 megahertz networking backhauls in either a point-to-point -point or self-healing mesh topology. Using a mesh configuration, these devices could easily provide voice connectivity in a variety of disaster response scenarios, including search and rescue. Future plans would look at the military significance and the commercial viability of such a technology to enhance the first responders, the warfighters, in safety and health and survival. Also looking at the commercial end of it to market this into communities, networks throughout the country. ROIP bridging is another example of how Sermusa combines existing commercial off-the-shelf technologies into sustainable solutions for rural and underserved communities. It is our hope that this technology and others in development will assist groups such as the Johnstown Fire Department 
in better serving their communities. For more information, please contact Sermusa at www.sermusa.francis.edu or at area code 814-472-3389.